I. C. Little one, the hills in the morning sun. There is thy home for years to come. It is very beautiful and thou wilt be very happy there. The little one looked up into his mother's face in perfect faith. He was engaged in the pleasant occupation of sucking a sweetmeat, but that did not prevent him from gurgling responsibly. Yes, my olive bud, there is where thy father is making a fortune for thee. Thy father. Oh, wilt thou not be glad to behold his dear face? Twas for thee I left him. The little one ducked his chin sympathetically against his mother's knee. She lifted him on to her lap. He was two years old, a round, dimple-cheeked boy with bright brown eyes and a sturdy little frame. Ah! 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 Ooh! 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 puffed he, mocking a tugboat steaming by. San Francisco's waterfront was lined with ships and steamers, while other craft, large and small, including a couple of white transports from the Philippines, lay at anchor here and there offshore. It was some time before the Eastern Queen could get docked, and even after that was accomplished, a lone Chinaman who had been waiting on the wharf for an hour was detained that much longer by men with the initials U.S.C. on their caps, before he could board the steamer and welcome his wife and child. This is thy son, announced the happy Lai Chu. Hum Hing lifted the child, felt of his little body and limbs, gazed into his face with proud and joyous eyes, then turned inquiringly to a customs officer at his elbow. That's a fine boy you have there, said the man. Where was he born? In China, answered Hom Hing, swinging the little one on his right shoulder, preparatory to leading his wife off the steamer. Ever been to America before? No, not he, answered the father with a happy laugh. The customs officer beckoned to another. This little fellow, said he, is visiting America for the first time. The other customs officer stroked his chin reflectively. Good day, said Hom Hing. Wait, commanded one of the officers. You cannot go just yet. What more now, asked Hom Hing. I'm afraid, said the first customs officer, that we cannot allow the boy to go ashore. There is nothing in the papers that you have shown us, your wife's papers and your own, having any bearing upon the child. There was no child when the papers were made out, returned Hom Hing. He spoke calmly, but there was apprehension in his eyes and in his tightening grip on his son. What is it? What is it? quavered La Chu, who understood a little English. The second customs officer regarded her pityingly. I don't like this part of the business, he muttered. The first officer turned to Hom Hing and in an official tone of voice, said, Seeing that the boy has no certificate entitling him to admission to this country you will have to leave him with us. Leave my boy, exclaimed Hom Hing. Yes, he will be well taken care of, and just as soon as we can hear from Washington he will be handed over to you. But, protested Hom Hing, he is my son. We have no proof, answered the man with a shrug of his shoulders, and even if so we cannot let him pass without orders from the government. He is my son, reiterated Hom Hing, slowly and solemnly. I am a Chinese merchant and have been in business in San Francisco for many years. When my wife told to me one morning that she dreamed of a green tree with spreading branches and one beautiful red flower growing thereon, I answered her that I wished my son to be born in our country, and for her to prepare to go to China. My wife complied with my wish. After my son was born my mother fell sick and my wife nursed and cared for her, then my father, too, fell sick, and my wife also nursed and cared for him. For twenty moons my wife cared for and nursed the old people, 
and when they die they bless her and my son, and I send for her to return to me. I had no fear of trouble. I was a Chinese merchant and my son was my son. Very good, Ham Hing, replied the first officer. Nevertheless, we take your son. No, you not take him, he my son too. It was La Chu. Snatching the child from his father's arms she held and covered him with her own. The officers conferred together for a few moments, then one drew Hom Hing aside and spoke in his ear. Resignedly Hom Hing bowed his head, then approached his wife. Tis the law, said he, speaking in Chinese, and twill be but for a little while until tomorrow's sun arises. You, too, reproached Lat Chu in a voice eloquent with pain. But accustomed to obedience she yielded the boy to her husband, who in turn delivered him to the first officer. The little one protested lustily against the transfer, but his mother covered her face with her sleeve and his father silently led her away. Thus was the law of the land complied with. 2. 